What's up? Welcome to another episode of Evie's Review. So on this episode, you're gonna notice some changes. Last season, the first season, was, if you didn't get the joke, kind of about being silly and ridiculous. This season, I'm getting down to business. What business, might you ask? Well, nothing other than Backbit. What is Backbit? Backbit is this idea I had, like, almost a year ago. I was working part-time for this video game museum in Oakland, California, and they had all these Commodore 64 computers. Except, guess what? None of them worked! Now, if you've been watching my other videos, you'll know that the Commodore 64 computer is close to my heart because it was my second computer that I ever had. The first being the Timex Sinclair, also known in England as the ZX81, or as they say, ZX81. So really, the Commodore 64 was my first color computer. Anyway, this video game museum, they had in their stock like at least half a dozen Commodore 64 computers. Now my first gut impulse was, I want to open these things up and see what's inside of them. What's inside of them? So on the outside, there are two main revisions of the Commodore 64, the bread bin and the C64C. But inside is a whole different story. Inside you have the original, Rev A, Rev B, Rev B2, Rev B3, and Rev E. Now, there are some outliers, but those are the main ones. And something to save in your brain for later, the C64GS, which for most intents and purposes is really just a revision E. So how did Backbit come about? The first way I tried to load programs on the Commodore 64 once I got a few up and running was to use the 1541 disk drive. But guess what? Out of the 10 or so 1541 disk drives that were at the museum, you know how many were? Like, one and a half. So I said, you know what? It's 2019. Let's ditch the mechanical media already. So I did some research. I went on the internet and I found this cool SD2 IEC that looks just like a miniature 1541 disk drive and it's made by the future was 8-bit. I don't know, some guys in England, I guess. So I got this thing and it was so cool and exciting, but I plugged it in and then I'm like, now what do I do? And I tried to put a bunch of disk images and like most of them it didn't load and I was just kind of frustrated and confused to be honest. You think you just put the file on the SD card and fire up the machine and load quote star quote comma comma one and it should just work, right? Well, truth be told, there are certain cases where that will work, but for the most part, it didn't really work. So needless to say, I was a bit frustrated. So I looked around, what else is there that I can use to get programs running on my Commodore? So I found this device called the Easy Flash 3. It's available from go for retro And the cool thing is about Easy Flash, once you actually figure out how to use it, it can do some pretty cool stuff. It allows you to get these one megabyte versions of old 64 games, and you get instant loading. It's amazing. However, transferring the games to the EC Flash is another story. And the real disappointment for me is you can only have seven games at once. It's like having an eight gigabyte iPod. Once you make room for all the system software, it's like there's not a ton of room left for songs. So needless to say, I was still not quite happy with this solution, especially because I wanted to see people come into the museum and sit down and play like a thousand games on the Commodore, and that just wasn't going to be possible here. So meanwhile, in a distant land far away, Atari World in fact, I discovered this thing called the Uno Kart for the Atari 2600. Now, for those in the know, there was a popular cartridge that came out before called the Harmony, but I thought, 
why not try something new and open source-ish? So I literally spent like three whole days consolidating all these Atari 2600 games into the most comprehensive collection that I could muster, aside from the weird, like, not kid safe titles. Some people are just a little bit too obsessed about that stuff. Not me, I'm a nice girl. So I spent this massive amount of effort to get all these games on this Atari 2600, and honestly, at the end of the day, it was like, what for? I mean, yeah, museum patrons can play all these games now, and that's dandy, but I wanted to get some satisfaction out of it. I wanted to say, I did this. And you don't really get much credit in this world for just, like, organizing stuff. You have to do something that's never been done before or that nobody else can do. So I did a little research, and I discovered this article of how to make your own Uno cart. And the thing is, the technology inside the Atari 2600 is not actually that much different than the technology inside the Commodore 64. Spec-wise, they're different. Generation-wise, they're different. Market-wise, they're different. But they have the same processor, pretty similar data bus speed, and they both have this cartridge port. So, proof of concept. I knew it was gonna be possible to make my own multifunctional cartridge for the Commodore 64. Some people call it an EverDrive, some people call it an Uno card. I call it a backbit. Now, that's just one timeline. In an alternate timeline, there's this cool system from the 80s, no, the 90s, called the Commodore 64 game system, which obviously was a total market flop. You can't put out a Commodore 64 in 1990 and expect it to compete with the Genesis, the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's just not gonna happen. But as I've always had kind of a fetish for artists that didn't quite make it, there's something tremendously decadent about somebody else's bad idea. And being someone that used to collect a lot of CDs and basically spent my whole life savings on doing such, this idea of collectability does kind of push my buttons. So if you go to eBay, you'll see various cartridge titles that were designed for the C64GS. Now this was kind of the inspiration for Easy Flash. It was designed to basically reproduce these original ocean titles. But you have to understand, I'm someone who's had a lot of addictive behavior in my life, and I'm of the maturity now where I want something that's not gonna exploit my weaknesses. I want something that's gonna empower me. So enter Backbit. My original inspiration was I wanted to make like a Commodore 64 game system, but I wanted to put it all inside one cartridge. And I didn't want you to be dependent on these $200 collector's items on eBay. So here's the Backbit. You can literally take all these games, put them on this one card, drop them right into the Backbit, and boom, you can play anything instantly. Wanna play Frogger? There's Frogger. There's Ultima 4. Wanna save your game?
save your game. Wanna play Castle Wolfenstein? Want to save your progress in Castle Wolfenstein? So, as you can see, Backbit is quite a versatile device. As you're going to see in the upcoming videos, I'm going to explain every little feature about Backbit and how to use it to the fullest. So, this is a device you're really going to get a lot of longevity out of. It's going to be something that's going to allow you to be creative and share your creative projects. So, what would you like to know about Backbit? The philosophy? The technology? What you can do with it? Planned features? Let me know in the comments below. So, thanks for watching. If you like this video, and you want to get notified when I put up the next one, just click subscribe. And tune in next week for another episode of Evie's Review.